Thanks to Oppo for sponsoring this video. So technology has obviously shaped the world around us in imaginable ways. From the invention of the light bulb to the cell phone, television, and now the smartphone, technology is evolving and changing, and it's not stopping. Even the years that I've been online, sitting in a chair in front of a camera, uh, I've seen phones go from resistive touchscreens, see keyboards go away, to smartphones, to wearables, to everything in between. That's only a short period of time and a very niche spot of the market. But to see technology as a whole grow into life-changing innovations is amazing. And those innovations are closer than I expected. And I wanna talk about one company in particular and some amazing things that they're doing. Before I get there though, I'm doing this for a while. It is my favorite part of the job is I get to just say a John, thank you for being awesome. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for supporting all the side projects that we're working on. Just thank you for watching, being alive and being good humans in the world. I wanna give you guys a chance to win 500 bucks, gift card to anywhere you want, anywhere in the world that you live. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite thing I'm gonna talk about is. Be sure to leave your social handle so I can contact you if you win. Run it for 10 days, all information will be in the description. So let's talk about Oppo. It's a company that you're probably familiar with, right? You probably know their smartphones. They've made some really big ones over the past few years in the tech space. And they're pushing the envelope of what phones can do, especially from a new feature standpoint. The Oppo N3 had a rotating camera, so you could take selfies with the same great quality as the rear camera. The Find X had a pop-up camera that you have a full screen experience without any interruption. And today, they have some of the highest end cell phones and accessories on the market. But they're doing something now called an innovation accelerator. And Oppo wanted to sort of give an opportunity to other companies to create groundbreaking technologies that can help people in the real world with real tangible problems. And oftentimes a great idea can only get you so far. You need resources and capital to get that great idea off the ground. Oppo is aware of this. They created something called the Oppo Research Institute. Set up a competition with 10 winners and each winner getting $46,000 to help make their dream a reality. And a lot of these ideas sounded like dreams. And this was a gigantic success. Uh, in total, there were 536 proposals from 39 countries and regions around the world. Some of these proposals are tech that I think we will be seeing in our everyday lives in the really near future. So how about holograms? You know, we've seen Tupac come back. Uh, they've been a thing of science fiction for decades. And I think, at least personally, I'm secretly hoping they become a, just a widespread reality at some point. Uh, Earspeed feels the same way. They created a 3D holographic image that doesn't need to be a physical medium to work, which is nuts. So the goal is to create a user interface that lets you interact with without actually touching anything. So for example, you're in a hospital, you could use a number pad without needing to actually disinfect. So you're not actually touching the number itself. Or at a terminal, you can enter information by touching the air. This is the first aerial touch-based interactive system and it's making holograms a reality. Imagine the past few years, you're at the grocery store and you're touching stuff into the keypad. You don't have to worry about disinfecting it or getting anybody sick. Literally, you are touching air and the hologram is coming up looking like your fingers are making contact with it. That's nuts. That sounds like somebody should be asking Obi-Wan for help. It was a really cool use of new technology. So natural disasters are obviously an unfortunate reality of this world. We're seeing hurricanes uh, hit the southern coast of the United States right now. Something that we hope to never experience, something we know is just inevitably going to happen at some point. If not to us, then somebody we know. And earthquakes are one natural disaster, I think, give people extra pause. It's kind of one of the only phenomena we don't really have a reliable early warning system for. Hurricanes, tornadoes, even volcanoes give us some type of warning. Earthquakes are different, at least until now. So the Institute of Care Life's made a proposal for an earthquake early warning system and rapid intensity reporting. This system is actually in place in China right now. It can provide alerts to citizens of an imminent earthquake. So in 2008, uh, an 8.0 earthquake hit Wenchuan, uh, China. And this was obviously devastating. Uh, over 69,000 people lost their lives, which is a hard number to even fathom. Back then, technology to help other people wasn't a reality. Now it is. And it's estimated that the early warning system was in place, it could have saved 20 to 30,000 people. So the system works by using computing, IoT, and AI to create an interconnected system to give warnings over loudspeakers, smartphones, TVs, pretty much anything with a screen or a speaker. And to date, the system has successfully provided warnings for 72 destructive earthquakes 
with no false alarm in the past 10 years. It's allowed schools, high-speed rails, other communities to prepare for an earthquake before it's too late. And as somebody who has lived through many, many earthquakes uh, here, something that would be really nice to have. Now, I don't think that we're experiencing the same devastation that other areas can have here uh, in California, but to prepare for these things. So if you want to you want to leave, you want to prepare your family for it, you want to get your valuables in order, whatever it might be, knowing it's coming, you can make a decision what you want to do. And I think that's what technology does. It gives the power back to the people to make their own decisions. So I've been pretty vocal, I don't know, over the past like 10 years. Uh, I am by far not a perfect person. And I think one of the things that I am constantly struggling with on a daily basis uh, is sleep. It's insomnia, I can't turn my brain off. It is just an absolute disaster for me. Uh, I have tried every bit of technology, wearable and otherwise, uh, to try to help solve this. And it's hard to be on camera. It's hard to be a dad, it's hard to be a person. But I'm like, I get two hours of sleep per night. I checked the sleep app and it just white peaks and I'm awake every 10 minutes. It's really tough to do this. So that's where this Eden technology is, uh, is really cool. Especially something I can look forward to taking sleep tracking to uh, the logical next level. So right now sleep tracking is becoming obviously very popular uh, with things like watches, rings, wrist straps becoming totally ubiquitous. What these products fail to do is get a real brain reading of what's happening during our sleep. All they can really tell us is whether or not we're asleep, what level of sleep we're on, and if we're moving. Uh, but Edan has developed earbuds that do a real EEG inside of your ear, something that's usually only possible inside of like a sleep lab. But the technology is available to anyone at home. And they look like regular earbuds. It's a small little module inside that collects brain waves for much more accurate, in-depth information uh, about your sleep. And since you're reading brain waves, at least the possibility of becoming a brain computer interface, something that we have never seen before uh, in this space. And that is awesome. So if you know someone in your life that has vision issues, uh, you know how debilitating it can be. Uh, you might not know this about me. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was legally blind in my left eye. I had to wear an eye patch over my right eye to strengthen the muscle uh, in my left so I could actually have some normal vision. Uh, companies like Jade Bird Vision uh, is trying to help folks with sort of macular de degeneration. It's a disease that doesn't currently have a cure, uh, but it affects thousands of people around the world. So, using semiconductors, design, and AI help with diagnosis and therapeutics, it can use cameras to calculate the spatial distribution of visual distortion. So it then calculates what is needed to eliminate that distortion and use eye tracking and correction instruments to restore vision back to normal. So it'll see the peaks and valleys and it'll fill them in with respective peaks and valleys, restoring almost blindness back to normal. That is absolutely incredible and amazing and wonderful uses of new technology. I think of new technology, it's how much faster is a processor in my phone? How much faster can I download a movie or stream a song? I think of technology as life-changing and world-changing that's where I think we can see where we're going and where technology is going to lead us. It is incredible, it's amazing, and I think the future is closer than any of us expected.